All right, hey, since I keep getting asked about my thoughts on, like, the classes and the tiers and how good this or that is for Rogue Legacy 2, let's go ahead and make a freaking tier list out of these characters. <clears throat> so we're over here on Tier Maker, you know, and we all, uh, we'll go ahead and go through them all. And I'll, I'll even explain it. All right, let's just go ahead and pick the, go with the first thing right away, and that is Duelist... In fact, if anything, can can we can we add a row above? There there we go. Perfect. All right. This is the duelist tier, aka the best class. And uh, you might be questioning Thor, why is duelist the best class? What makes him so good? A uh, very simple, his ability, combat roll. It is a 2 second cooldown ability that lets you go through anything. It's as simple as that. Uh, everything else about him is solid. He has good attack speed. He has good attack animations. He has good movement to him. But combat roll puts him above and beyond everything else because of the simple fact that, oh no, I'm about to get hit by a spell. I can dodge it. A physical attack. I can dodge it. I have to go through the boss. I can roll right through him. Um, if you have quick reflexes, Duelist is by far the best class because Combat Roll is a two-second cooldown iframe machine that lets you ignore damage and put yourself from a dangerous position into a safe position. So he's easily my number one, my top tier, and absolutely by far my favorite class to play because of how incredibly strong he is. All right, Barbarian. For Barbarian... This may seem a little questionable to some people. Some people really like Barbarian and some people do not. Personally, I think he's around C to a B tier, somewhere between those two. Now, if you uh, want a quick explanation why, it's because while the Barbarian can hit very hard, he's kind of awkward to move. He has a very long animation on his grounded attack and his aerial attack is very very weak unless you can get a lot of hits on to it so because of the fact that barbarian has like honestly not the best aerial attack and kind of really slow animations on the ground i personally don't think he's very good barbarian has a great ability and this is where barbarian really falls for me is that his ability requires you to get hit before it comes back. It's not on a cooldown, it's on a get hit basis, which is the worst possible way to refill your ability. So Barbarian's really, really great ability can be used once and then you have to take a hit before you can use it again. Especially in the early game for this, this is terrible. In the later game, this becomes much more manageable because you start getting uh, um, the ability to heal by killing enemies. But uh, even that is something you don't necessarily want to have to do because of all sorts of different items and relics and whatnot that make you not want to take damage, along with not wanting to take damage. So Barbarian, pretty low on the tier list to me. Archer? Archer's pretty good. Archer is solid. Archer is the longest range class in the game. Archer has a good skill that allows them to stand on any platform at any time, letting them get to places other classes can't early on in your playthrough. When you're standing on your ivy platform, every shot you do inflicts fungal to the opponent so that you can get a lot of good burst damage out of that. Um, the one thing that's a little bit weak against Archer is they have slow attack speed. Um, they also can guarantee crits, but you have to hold the bow for an extremely long time compared to just sending off normal attacks. So Archer falls from an S to an A for me. It's still a very good class but does not hit that S rank for me. Next up, we got Boxer. Now, Boxer, Boxer's good, but how good is Boxer? Boxer is S rank good, baby. Why is Boxer S rank good? Boxer comes with combo system built in, and combo is one of the best relic things that you can get for most classes. Every time you reach 15 combo, every hit from that point on is a guaranteed critical attack. 100% of the hits past 15 combo are crits. Boxer attacks very fast. Boxer can use its mobility very quickly and get out of its attack very quickly. 
uh, Boxer is missing something to give it safety, but Boxer makes up for that by having incredibly high damage on top of having its knockout punch, which can deal upwards of hundreds of damage even on your early playthroughs. Boxer is great because of this. And even if you're against normal enemies, you have the option of doing your fast jabs or an uppercut to take care of them if you just want to get through the room quickly. So Boxer's got a lot of flexibility on top of it. Next up, we got Chef. Chef is S tier, but bordering on A tier. And here's why. A lot of people like Chef, and I agree with them. My problem with Chef is it's not great for bosses. If you're exploring and you're going for money runs and you're trying to unlock boxes and stuff like that, Chef is easily one of the best classes, if not the best class. Chef's frying pan lets you reflect any sort of enemy projectiles. It is slow, but it is capable of keeping you safe. Well, not every enemy projectile, but a lot of them. It inflicts burn, it guarantees crit, and the most important thing is his soup. The way the chef's soup works is anytime you pick up a mana potion or a heal, it refills a charge with a max of three charges, and you can just use it at that time to refill your mana and your health. So every health pickup is two health pickups because of the chef's soup. You eat soup, you pick up the health, you got the health pickup, and you've got another soup. Perfect. Again, the biggest issue Chef has, not great against bosses. Not the best against bosses out there. Slow attack speed, and the soup just kind of gives you a little bit more health. But other than that, very good. Next up, we have Assassin. Personally, I like Assassin quite a bit. I toss it in the A ranking. I'll put Assassin in the A tier. Now, the reason Assassin doesn't go higher is for a couple reasons. One, Assassin is tricky. And what I mean by tricky is every time you attack with Assassin, it's three hits. Weak hit, weak hit, crit. Weak hit, weak hit, crit. Because Assassin can guarantee crits, that means more trinkets, more relics are good on Assassin than they are on other characters because you can get those crits commonly assassin also attacks fast so fast attacking relics like the poison infliction also good combo also good the problem is that assassin is very low health assassin does have a get out of jail free card but it's on a very long cooldown you have to do i believe 12 hits after it to get it back and the fact that assassin because it does weak hit weak hit strong hit like that means that, in general, you need to get more hits to kill an enemy. So if there's an annoying enemy you want to, like, poke at and then run away from, it can be very difficult for Assassin to deal with. Um, especially, say, a flying enemy. Jumping and trying to follow them and only getting one of your weak hits off makes it tough for Assassin to, to function too hard like that. But where Assassin shines is that Assassin's ability gives them guaranteed criticals for a few seconds, along with making them completely immune to damage during the duration of the, that time. So you go immune to damage to dodge an annoying spell, and then you come out of it swinging extremely hard, doing very high damage. Assassin can chew through bosses and melt them very, very quickly. All right, next up we have Ranger. Ranger, about an A. Similar to Archer, this is a purely ranged class. Does not have as much range as Archer, but where Archer is slow attacking with heavy hits, Ranger is very quick attacking with lighter hits, but attacks so very fast, you can either sit yourself in the air during the firing, or you can build up your combo quickly, build up your poison quickly. There's lots of relics that are good on Ranger because of it. You guarantee crits on your last few shots, but Ranger's fallbacks come down to the fact that Ranger's ability isn't the most amazing in the world, and Ranger does have to continuously reload their gun. And by having to reload their gun constantly, um, they did a really weird thing where they made the gun reload button the same as your use button, so you can accidentally go through rooms when you don't want to, which is just a slight annoyance. But um, it comes down to it can be very easy to accidentally not reload your gun when you try to because of this kind of thing. But overall, Ranger, quite good. Next up, we have the Dragon Lancer. The Dragoon. And honestly, I'm not impressed. Not impressed by the Dragoon at all. C rank, 
maybe bordering on D rank. But uh, the Dragoon is not very good at all. The, what the Dragoon has is the ability to charge up their Lance and fly into the air. They did recently buff it, and I haven't played it a whole lot since the recent buff like a day or two ago, so it's a little better now, I guess. But um, the Dragoon's biggest weakness is long cooldown on their ability. They absolutely need their shield to be up because any sort of projectile will just knock you out of your charge. They have a very, very long animation on their normal attack, which holds them in place, which can sometimes be good and sometimes be a, a detriment to them. And when you want to get that long charge off and, and go for a crit or just go flying, um, any sort of hit knocks you out of it, and it takes quite a while. Next up, we have mages. Mages are somewhat tricky. I want to put mages down in the C tier, personally. The problem with mages is they are incredibly, incredibly dependent on what spells they get. Their base attack is not very good. The mana leech that it gains does not refill your mana nearly as quickly as you wish it might. It's stuck in an awkward, always firing forward in a certain range position, which means that it can be hard to make it work and hard to hit. If enemies are above or below you, you can't do anything unless you have certain spells. So mages are make or break based on the spells that they get. If they have two really good spells, mages can be quite good. But if they have two spells that are kind of weak, two spells that are average, or just two spells that suck, mage is terrible. Mage is awful. Mage can't do shit. Which is why C bordering on D is where I would put mage right, right now. Next up we have Valkyries, and Valkyries are the tip top of the S class in my opinion. Valkyries are amazing. Valkyries come with a weapon that allows them to attack up, down, left, or right. And what that means is that no matter where your opponent is, in basically any position, the Valkyrie can very easily reach them. A lot of other classes will have tricky situations where they can't hit an enemy because it's right below them and they have to go down into a danger zone. Valkyries don't need to. Above them, Valkyries don't need to. Valkyries are great at keeping themselves in a safe position while also being able to dish out damage. On top of that, their bonus is bonus armor, which makes it a little bit safer for them on top of that as just their class bonus. As for their ability, their ability is Deflect. Deflect technically has zero cooldown. Zero, zip. All you have to do is successfully deflect a projectile. A small fireball, a medium fireball, an arrow, one of those homing ghosts, all those things. Not only do you deflect them, you deal damage to anything close to you. And on top of that, it refills your mana, which means Valkyrie are a better mage than mage. Yes, mages refill their mana by hitting enemies. Valkyries refill mana by more when they deflect. And there are a ton of enemies in the game that'll shoot like four or five fireballs at you real quick, and the Valkyrie just eats that and says, all right, here's a big cast. So Valkyries are better mages than mages while being a good physical class on top of it. On top of that, Deflect is able to deflect almost any projectile. Not everything, but almost everything, making them really, really, really good. So Valkyrie is like the tip top of the S class. Just below Duelist. All right, next up, we have the Knight, the base class. Now, you might think, oh, the base class? Maybe that's like averaging at a B. No, I mean, Knights are okay, I guess, but they're not necessarily killing it. Thing is, Knights are kind of killing it. Knights are good, guys. Knights are really good. They're A class, definitely. I'd put them uh, a little bit over Ranger and Assassin, even. Heck, even over Archer, top of the A class. Um, now, what knights have is they just have their basic attack is just very solid, good damage and stuff like that. Their scaling is good for, for their unique class scaling is nice. And their ability, their shield ability is really good, but tough to use. So they're kind of a skill-based A class. If you aren't good at using their shield ability, they're probably down to a B for you. But... What the shield ability allows you to do is if you perfect shield something, then you will then do a counterattack on all enemies in a large AoE. On top of 
hitting them for damage, for your swing damage, it also implies vulnerable to them, making your next attacks for that duration deal way higher damage. The biggest weakness of the knight class is the, the shield ability having a fairly long cooldown when you use it. So you use it and then you get a bunch of damage, but then it's kind of on cooldown for a while. And that's where knights kind of fall down a little bit into the above average good tier as opposed to amazing. But knights are very solid. Knights are great. All right, next up we have Ballista Archers. Ballista Archers, I'm gonna put them in a B class. Now, I don't like them quite as much as uh, uh, um, regular archers because they just don't feel How do I say this? They don't feel nearly as fluid. They're really strong. Ballista archers do... Ballistas do really, really high damage. Perfect release for a skill crit will probably one-shot most any enemy if you've got decent strength built up, right? But the problem is you can only fire while on the ground, which really sucks. It takes a long time to set you up. It does have the longest range, and it does shoot faster than normal archers. But you can't interrupt it. It's very slow. So you really have to pick and choose the moments you're allowed to attack. And in a game like this, um, Ballista Archers are probably one of, if not the worst class for fighting bosses because you cannot sit still on the ground and hold it and then fire your big shot. They're good for exploration because you will, you will burst through enemies really quick but you cannot boss fight with them. That's why I'm putting them kind of average. I might even like order them on C, if not put them to C. <laughs> you know what I mean? <clears throat> okay. Next up, we have the Hephaestus Hammer Barbarian. So, the way this weapon works is that you toggle it and then you spin. You spin, you spin, you spin, you spin, and that's all you do to attack. I put this in D tier. I fucking hate this weapon. <laughs> I absolutely despise this weapon. I think it's awful. Uh, the one thing it's good for is that the cursed ghost projectiles that try to home in on you can't do anything, but you can't do nearly as much precision movement as you want to. You can't do high damage at any given time because you're always just... Your only attack is the spin attack. So unlike regular Barbarian, which at least has the guaranteed crit when they're on the ground, you're always doing the basically the air spin for the most part. It's not great. It's pretty bad. I, I've never had a run with that weapon that I felt good with. All right, next up we have Explosive Fist Boxer. Honestly, I don't know where to put this. I'm probably gonna put it around B. It's not bad. It's not as good as regular Boxer. At least it hasn't felt as good as regular Boxer. Um, the strength it has over regular Boxer is you can kind of lob explosive shots in a little, in a bit of a way, but it doesn't quite feel as uh, it doesn't quite feel as fluid as regular boxer so I'm gonna put it there I'll be honest I don't have a lot of experience with the explode with the enkindled gauntlet fists so this is one I'm not super sure of all right, Spoony Chef. Okay, so the chef's normal weapon is the frying pan that lets them knock enemies back, or, or knock projectiles back, and gives them a little bit of extra safety from that. Next, we have the spoons. Spoons can be hurled, and then they bounce around and uh, uh, has, have some pretty good int scaling. This is a hard weapon to use, but it's pretty darn good. I'm gonna put it like right up there in the S tier, 
Next to Chef, probably a little worse than regular Chef, but it's quite good. So uh, explosive, so the, the spoons, the way they work is you lob them and then they can bounce once. And if you hit them after the bounce, they do bonus damage. So it's a high skill ceiling. You know what? We'll even put it into like the middle of the A tier. Put it into the middle of the A tier. Um, just because it's, it's, it's tough there. Tough to use. But it, it is good if you use it well. I've, I had a really, really good spoon run once. It's very good if you use it well. All right, pizza delivery night. So this is the alternate weapon for the night, a pizza. So pretty much you throw it out like a boomerang. It spins in one spot for a bit and then returns. And when it returns, it guarantees crits. Pizza's A tier, baby. Pizza's good. Pizza is arguably better than regular night, depending on how you like it. So the pizza does multiple hits, meaning that there are more items, more relics that are better for the pizza than they are for the regular night. Combo, for example, builds up really fast. Poison builds up really fast. That kind of stuff is really great on the pizza. You can guarantee crits really easily. The pizza's actually quite good, and you can even pop and manipulate it so it spins around you, so you got pizza blades spinning around you while you move forward. It does disappear after a certain set of time, but it's fairly good. You can have up to like five pizzas on the screen at once if you do it right. At the very least, you can easily get two to three pizzas on screen just by spamming it. Pizza's really good, so definitely an A tier in my opinion. Next up, we've got the Ronin. So the Ronin is your high strength, low health character. The Ronin comes with one of the longest range weapons in the katana. It can also be angled diagonally up and diagonally down. So that means that the Ronin has a little bit of extra, um, a little bit of extra aiming capabilities on it. And because of that, I put the Ronin into high A, maybe low S tier. The Ronin is really good. It will absolutely do damage. The, we the weakness of the Ronin is that it's a his attack is relatively slow. It is a one-hit high damage, and then he has to resheath his weapon before he pulls it back out. Now, that means that certain relics lose value on him. Getting combo on Ronin, very, very difficult. Getting poison stacks on Ronin, not very easy. But where Ronin lacks in that, Ronin makes up for it, and you can guarantee crits at certain ranges. And it comes with a very good ability um, that allows him to essentially teleport and slash through enemies. The problem with it is that it doesn't have iframes at the end of it or at the beginning of it, only during the slash through them. So you have so it's a pretty high skill cap ability, which is why Ronin. Not necessarily A, a uh, uh, high A, but middling A. Definitely middling A. Has a lot of potential to deal high damage, but uh, again, the weaknesses of low health and having difficulty with its ability being good can run into you. All right, next up we've got Bard. Okay, the way Bard works is you shoot a little note out on your loot and then you can bounce on that note to deal AoE damage, and you can build up stacks on dancing, and then pop the dance stacks to deal a lot of burst damage off of all your notes. So Bard has really, really high potential damage, and especially really, really high burst damage if you can get those dance stacks. Bard is fucking terrible. <laughs> now, I just said all these things about Bard has a lot of potential. The problem is all that potential is extremely difficult, if not impossible to build up in most situations. Um, so Bard wants to shoot notes out of their loot and then bounce around on them and constantly use kickflips and stuff to build up the dance stacks and then pop them and then repeat the process. All right. The problem with that is one, it takes time to build up. Two, the enemies are not going to let you sit there and just bounce on your note and do whatever you want, especially in a boss fight where you can't like kill an enemy. 
3, a lot of the times there are spikes on the walls or the ceilings, or maybe there's fireballs being sent your way and you can't continue bouncing and then you lose all your stacks and now you don't have your damage and you have to start all over. Bard is a class that wants you to take time to build up and then deal a bunch of damage and have no defensive options whatsoever while doing so. So it is essentially a class that is almost impossible to play <laughs> because even, even a boss slowly floating towards you means you only have so much time before you have to get the hell out of dodge. If they're also shooting fireballs or there's a, a hazard in the wall or the ceiling that you might hit if you go too far in one direction, means that you can't do a lot of what you want to do as a bard. Now we've got Electric Guitar Bard. The way this works is it requires you to build kinetic en energy by doing spin kicks, which then charges it up. And once it's charged, it fires a long range spark that consumes the charge. It's like spin kick, shoot, spin kick, shoot. It's better than Bard, in my opinion, by a little bit, but it's still bad still not good generally that's going to do less damage than what you want to do it's slower to deal the damage than what you want to do it's not great I, I don't recommend it similar play style to bard while being slightly different and next we have the uh, uh reaper mage also these these rankings kind of go for the weapons themselves for these special weapons, so don't worry. You can you can think of them that way for any of the any time you're offered the weapons. All right, so Scythe Mage. The way this works is it will charge forward and then do two slashes. The first slash will crit a high health enemy, and the second slash will crit a low health enemy. So essentially, it's set up to charge toward an enemy, slash twice to kill it. Crit, crit, right? So, the issue with this is it forces you into a forward momentum and it locks you into that animation, which means that you really, really, really have to make sure your spacing is perfect or else you are going to run your face into an enemy or you're not going to get close enough to hit them, which means this is a really hard weapon to use. On top of that, it's being used on a class that is low health to start with. Personally, I don't like the Reaper's Scythe at all. It's not as bad as Bard, but it's bad. Um, it's its reward isn't worth the amount of difficulty it has in being used. If you want to position yourself properly to guarantee hard, hard crits on enemies and kill them in one, maybe two hits, just play Ronin. Position yourself right at the edge of the enemy, slash from a very much longer range without pushing yourself toward the enemy's face, and crit them. Much, much better than using this scythe and charging your face into the enemy, wouldn't you say? Or if you're a duelist, use your ability and then hit them. Use your ability that makes you invincible to roll through them and then turn around and hit them. Or if you're a boxer, just punch them a bunch. Or many other different Thing, different ways to make yourself good. <laughs> There's all sorts of ways to make yourself strong and to crit through enemies quickly, and using the Reaper Scythe is not a good way to do it. Um, so I've noticed there's two things that aren't here. We don't have our Astromancer and we don't have our Pirate. So, hmm... How can we make this work? Unfortunately, it's not like I can just add another character, can I? Nope, doesn't seem like it. Well, uh, let me just go ahead and say that for uh, Pirate, I would put the Pirate firmly in the B class. Pirate has solid, a solid weapon that allows them both melee and ranged capabilities. The cannon is less range than the arrows, but it does do a little bit more damage, and it does some splash AoE. On top of that, the first hit that you give knocks enemies back, and then you can hold the hit to then charge the cannon and shoot them immediately. 
which is rather nice. Their ability, the pirate ship, lets you fly fly around. It does constant DPS. You can even jump off it and it'll continue firing. And it'll eventually then shoot forward and then explode on them, doing solid AoE damage. So it's a solid ability. The problems with pirate are having somewhat low health, somewhat low uh, uh, survivability because you don't have any safety measures or anything like that. And they're slow. Pirates are slow. Pirates are slow, kind of like the Barbarian, but unlike the Barbarian, they they feel smoother because you have more mobility options and can do your aerial strong attacks um, while... You can do your strong attacks while in the air, unlike Barbarian, which does a weak one. Save the image and draw them in MS Paint. And then Astromancer. All right, so Mage is a C tier. Astromancer, like Mage, is int-based and is very much based around you casting spells and stuff like that. Astromancer, unlike Mage, has a really good normal attack, though, that does constant DPS, builds up your combo really fast, guarantees crits if you get them in the center of it, and is a huge AoE. Therefore, Astromancer is a little less dependent on their spells, and Astromancer comes with an ability rather than two spells, and the ability turns them into an invincible comet for three seconds, which allows them to fly through the area and ignore damage during that time. Actually, I think it's two seconds, but still. Either way, it makes you extremely fast and untouchable for a period of time. Astromancer I put in the S class. Astromancer's right up here in the S class. It's really, really good. It's far less spell dependent than Mage. It builds up mana way faster than Mage because every attack, including your spells, builds mana on the Astromancer. It has a massive AoE on its normal attack, and its normal attack is good, and it has an ability that is very, very strong that gives them high mobility and invincibility. The big weak drawback of the uh, uh, Astromancer is the ability itself has a long cooldown. It's like 9 to 10 seconds, so you, you gotta then make sure you dodge a lot. And the fact that Astromancer doesn't burst damage, it does damage per second. There's a big difference between those. Burst damage, hit an enemy once, it's gone, like your Ronin. Astromancer is going to have to hit any enemy, all of them, even the weakest of enemy enemies, multiple times before they die. That means there's more opportunity for even the small enemies to get a counterattack on you and hurt you. But Astromancer has a get-out-of-jail-free card. Astromancer builds up mana faster than any class other than maybe Valkyrie. And Astromancer is able to spam spells and their attacks, build up combo, build up all that stuff with fast hits, making it really, really good in any situation, whether you're just doing a normal run or you're doing a, uh, a boss fight. Astromancer is quite good. If you're looking for a class that spends mana a lot and casts a lot and feels good, pick Astromancer over Mage every time. And that's where I would put the, the tiers overall for everything. Remember, Pirate in B, Astromancer in S, since those two aren't on here. This is this is pretty much what I would think right now. Maybe they'll buff some classes and make them feel better. Um, some other people, some people are going to disagree with me. That's fine. You can disagree with me. You can be wrong. I'm always right. You can be wrong. It's no problem. But this is the definitive tier list from someone who's never wrong. There you go. Play these classes in the in the duelist tier and the S tier and you'll and you'll win. Play these classes in the D tier and you're gonna have a bad time. You can make them work. No class is unplayable. Some classes are just way harder than others to make work and require a lot of work just to do the basics of what another class does. Like again, for Bard, by the time the Bard builds up and does their big damage on, say, a boss. The boxer would have killed the boss. <laughs> Bard's like, I've got my setup. Here's my burst. And the boxer's like, that's cool, dude. I punched it 50,000 times in the time it took you to do that. And the boss died. Anyway, there we go. That's my tier list for the game. That's what I think about the, uh, the different classes and the weapons right now. And uh, if you're looking for classes to play, pick that stuff up in the, in the S, the A tier, and they'll all do you pretty well. Hope you enjoyed this uh, little tier list, guys. Hope it helps you.